Well, hey there, guys. It's your favorite backyard geographer again. I was out in the garage going through my junk, and I thought of you. Well, California has a dynamic history when it comes to its geography and geology. And being an earth scientist, we often have the opportunity to experience this history and, and unearthing of science firsthand. That being said, let's go back in time, somewhere between the Pliocene and the Holocene, and say hello to my little friend, a piece of California mammoth bone. So a few years ago, I was invited, along with some other colleagues, to an excavation site in Eastern California to help with the removal of what is believed to have been a 10,000-year-old mammoth. I say we believe it was a mammoth because at that time, 10,000 years ago, there was a little bit of overlap between mastodons and mammoths. Mastodons first you know, appeared in California about 5 million years ago. The mammoths appeared about 1.8 million, leaving a little bit of overlap, and so we often find them together, especially in places such as the Eastern Sierra. Now, the big difference between a mastodon and a mammoth, other than you know, identifying teeth, is also the tusks. The tusks of a mastodon are more flat and pointed out, and then the tusk of a mammoth are usually more curled at the end. Now in this case, the only thing that we were excavating was specifically the rear leg, it was the left leg, and that's what we pulled from and that's what this piece is actually from. We were unable to obtain enough of it because it wasn't really preserved well. We found it in a sand dune that dated 10,000 years ago along uh, an ancient lake bed. So it wasn't preserved well enough for us to be able to actually pull out it, you know, the bone in one piece. So um, at the end of the excavation, all of us were gifted one piece of the bone that we can use in our classes. So that's what I'm holding right here. Now, I keep mentioning the late Pleistocene, which is about 10,000 years ago. The Pleistocene provided California with other megafauna. Megafauna is a term that we use it to describe really, really big mammals. So things that we had in California, ground sloths, bears, bison, four-foot beavers, saber-toothed cats, also known as the Smilodon, which is our state fossil, and many, many more. Much of the Pleistocene megafauna would also include a majority of mammoths and mastodons, which went extinct by the end of that Pleistocene epoch due to the change in climates, as well as being overhunted by humans and other environmental stresses. So here's a fun fact, aside from this, right, this is fun, is that a specimen of a Colombian mammoth was collected by none other than William Mulholland during the construction of the Los Angeles Aqueduct. And that specimen he collected is actually housed at the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles. So I'm holding here, again, an original piece, an actual piece of mammoth bone. And then to the left of me on my little stand here, this is a sample of woolly mammoth hair of about the same age, not from the same, uh, same person. <laughs> But uh, this was one of those fun little novelty things I purchased that goes with it. But it's just curly little mammoth hair, which is kind of funny. Um, but just to kind of go with it. Now, put that back. Boop, boop, boop. So speaking of mammoths and all these really big animals, <laughs> California had several variety of mammoth throughout its history, including one of my favorite, the pygmy mammoth of Santa Rosa Island. Mammoth's remains were first found on the Channel Islands back in 1856, but it wasn't until 1994 that archaeologists found nearly a complete skeletal system of a pygmy mammoth. It was about 90% of it. The pygmy mammoth is a descent and a mixture of the traditional mammoth and the Colombian mammoth, and on average were about six feet tall and weighed about 1,700 pounds. That being said, it would have been appropriate for you to ride on like a horse, which is kind of cool. Um, again, it was found on within the Channel Islands, and so it was believed that during that time, during the last glaciation, a little later than, you know, older than 10,000 years, when all of the ice was on North American continent, that the sea level was much lower. And so it was a land bridge that these mammals were able to get out to. And then as the ice continued to melt, the sea level would increase, thus creating islands, which we now know as the Channel Islands, which is a fun fact, are part of the Santa Monica mountain range. Anyway, 
So I just thought this was something really unique to California history, California geology, California biogeography. I mean, there's just so much greatness to this. And again, it was such an amazing opportunity to work with some folks. So it was a couple of us, there was another geologist. We also had a sedimentologist, which means that scientist that went with us, you know, his degree was in specialty was looking at sediments and looking at the grain size and the colors. And so we were able to look at the, the layering of the material and looking at the different colors based on if they were organic materials. And so it really helped us date this item. Uh, again, this is something that's great to share with my classes just because it's something that's really unique to us in California. So maybe you have seen a mammoth or a mastodon at your local museum. Maybe you have been able to go on an excavation site or you just want to start digging in your backyard looking for you know, the next new thing. Be sure to like this video, comment below, don't forget to subscribe, and we'll talk soon. To have been a 10,000 year old mammoth remains. No, I don't know why I said remains. Hold on. During the last, you know, the late place, no, I, it's about 10,000 years old when it passed 10,000 years old.